what is going on guys it's going to be a very quick video just showing you what color id maps or id maps or color maps depending on what people call them are so basically what a color map is is you're just determining the materials of your asset via colors what i mean by that is you'll have something where you've separated it into red green blue for example this track and if i actually open up its texture here you then tell it what materials you want to make up those sections. So this blue it ended up being my metallic area. This green ended up being my sort of emissive. Doesn't look very emissive, but it is our emissive uh, blue. And the red is our sort of road material. And if you actually go into something like Substance Painter, that's where you can paint it like that. So I've painted it and then exported this, just the base color to then use that uh, to give us our sort of different colors on our little track asset now you can do this in photoshop uh, substance painter uh, basically anything you can paint in you can make a color id map so i'm not going to specifically go over how to paint it because it is literally just painting like if i wanted to for example the sides over here i just basically selected them in blue and boom they now have that as part of the id map so how do you use this now all you got to do is grab your id map so let's say we're using this uh, track again duplicate it let's grab the track material right click create material and we'll just go track and we'll drag that on really good use for this as well is you can separate them out so if i go into the instance i'm using for the track over here you can separate them out and you can actually change different parameters of them on the fly which can be really helpful in the future Can't even see the purpleness there. Uh, yeah. And you can also, you don't need to make them so they sharp transition like this, which can be helpful. You can slightly blend the transition. Or you can blend it as much as you want. You don't need to slightly blend it. It really depends on the purpose you're using it for. So if I actually look at this one, this ID looks like this, or color map looks like this, where it's blended. Uh, this is a sharp transition. So if I were to put a sharp transition one on here and click apply, you'll see it now sharp so on here i've just uh dried the uh material on just to get it in there uh, let's open up the material and we obviously do not want this just connected to base color what you want to do is you want to hold l and left click and get a lap you need two of these laps to, to make this work with three colors plug r into there and plug g into there and then you just want to plug that into there and that into there. And now A, B, and B are your three different parameters. So we hold free and left click a couple of times. We just get some free constances. And we just plug them in. And we just go color one, color two, and color three and then change the colors to actually make it look different so we go blue red green that's not really a red but okay um we now have this separated if we click apply you can see that separated out now we don't use the blue channel here and the reason for that is because blue is what's left over anyway so we're at, like right here, we're determining we want two colors. We want to determine whatever is red and then whatever's anything else. And then over here, we want to determine whatever's green and then whatever's left. And because blue is the only thing that's left, we don't need a whole separate lap to do that because we're just coloring that in through what's left anyway. Uh, you can continue to make this more complex by let's copy and paste these lerps. Move this over here so we've got some more room. Move this back. And then we can say, oh, we want to control its roughness with these ones. Or we want to control the metalness with these ones. So we'll plug that into metalness. That into roughness. Red into there. Green into there. So just copying what we did earlier. Green into there. Um, and then we know blue's A, purple's B, and then green is our second B. So we know that. So our purple being our road. Or should we say our blue being our metal, we know we want to make that metal. Because it's the first one. The road, I actually did the road like half metal. 
and then I did the glowy bit, just not metal at all. And when it came to roughness, I want to make the uh, the blue part. I want to make reflective, not that reflective. So we'll go point one. I want to make the road part not reflective at all, so I make that point nine. And then I want to make the uh, green part. It doesn't really matter because it glows. It's going to glow. So we'll just make that um, one. And if you ever have a case, which is what I'm about to show you, where you're only needing to control two parts, like just the green and whatever's left, which is what I'm going to do because I want to make it so that the um, green glows. Make another lap. Just grab the green because we know the green is what determines our light strips. Just grab the green, plug that into alpha, and I'm going to just use the color we're using for it. So here, plug that into, I believe, A. We'll see if I'm wrong in a minute. And then make a zero for B. Now, when we plug that into emissive, we did get it the wrong way around. I always get it the wrong way around first time. So we want that to be A, and we want the green to be in blue. Or to be in blue, to be in B, sorry. Like that. And now that's the part that glows. And then if you want to make it so it glows over the value of one, you can set a multiply. Throw that into there, a one constant into it, and then just plug that into our emissive. And that's basically all set up. So you can see it's glowing now and there. All you've got to do now is you can make it so everything has a parameter name or a scalar name. So we've got color one there, so we'll just go... Uh, what these were metal, so metal one, metal two, metal three, and the same here, roughness one, roughness two, roughness three, like that. And you can even change this to have a massive strength. And it's a little bit messy, but you see what's going on. We're basically using the RNG channels to lerp out the parts of the mesh we're wanting. Click apply. It's got wacky colors right now. So right click it, create material instance, throw the instance on there. And now we can open that instance and we should be able to change the color. So let's actually make it look more like it should, which would be a bit more like that for its uh, met uh, metal color. The road should be sort of a black around maybe there. Oh, it's really hard to get a nice dark tone and this will have a glow blue uh turn down the emissive so you can see some of that blue come through a bit more i think my wild settings has a uh, the bloom turned down so it's not quite bright uh, and then yeah you've got all these settings to change um the roughness for example you want this part to be less rough we could do something like that we want it to be less metallic we could turn that down you have full control over it because we turned it into instances and that's basically the simple way of using color maps I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you next time.